comrades. Thank you, first of all, for making it through a very intensive two and a half days. I hope you agree that uh, this summit has lived up to its name, the power of impact. <laughs> With the help of our sponsors, the Ford Foundation, the Michael and Dell Foundation, who were our co-hosts, and our other 11 supporters, and with the help of our amazing team, Amit, Shefali, Sukanya, Chris, and Meg. <laughs> 900 of us from 54 countries have worked to define and to decide what we're going to be doing over the next year. It's clear from our discussion that capitalism in its present form has fundamental flaws. It is not delivering on its promise to share prosperity and to bring social progress for all. We have persisted through many crises with the view that the system can be tinkered with, that we can have a measure here or a measure there that will solve the major challenges that we face. But we have now reached the stage where the scale of these challenges is so daunting that even the most skeptical are saying that something has to be done. Nothing less than a revolution will enable us to achieve solutions at a scale that can improve billions of lives and our planet. And you heard from Al Gore very vividly just how we are failing in the environmental area from tackling blindingly obvious challenges. Somehow, the uncertainty, the disquiet, the enormity of the issues are freezing us into inaction. And yet, within our grasp is a solution. The solution involves a fundamental change in capitalism. Because if capitalism is failing us, it is not hopeless. And when you hear Al Gore and Gordon Brown and Macron and Paul Pullman of Unilever, Emmanuel Faber of Danone, when you hear Darren Walker and Ratan Tata, when you hear Larry Fink, when you hear Bono supporting our efforts, you know that the revolution is underway. What this summit has brought for me is three important conclusions. The first has to do with the fact that we have to explain what we do in a simpler way that enables us to bring impact to the center of our consciousness. And I'll come back to that. Because to achieve that, I believe, we have to turn our efforts in defining our field and implementing our approaches into a movement, into a wide-ranging revolution. A revolution does not come from on top, it comes from below. And while we do need to persuade governments to come on side, because after all, they are our most natural partners, at the same time, we need to build from below the consumer, the pension saver, the investor, the entrepreneur, 
as the carriers of the pitchforks and the standard bearers of this revolution. To do that, we have to develop a different language and different means of delivering it. We have on impact now. How many of you have had a chance to leaf through it? That's most of you. I hope you feel. Thank you. I hope you feel that it can be our manifesto, that it is simple enough that it can speak to the standard bearers of this revolution. And our challenge now is to deliver our message in a way that leads to action. The purpose is not to persuade anymore. When we're dealing with the millennial generation, when we're dealing with a lot of pension savers, we're dealing with people who are asking themselves the question, what kind of a world do we want to live in? And they know it isn't the world that we do live in. So with this summit, we launch a digital campaign as a first step in trying to influence these constituencies. And we expect each and every one of you to spread the message, to use on impact. If you want to translate it, as some countries have asked me to do, please feel free to translate it, just do it well. Please publish it in the same format, come back to us so that we can approve the format and the language. We are making it available free of charge in a digital form, and you can print it cheaply in your countries. It's less than a half hour read, 20 normal sized pages. The message of On Impact is that impact investing does not have to involve delivering below market returns. You can make more profit because of impact. You can attract more talent because of impact. And you can grow faster because of impact. The fact that most people believe in the myth, which is that if you do good, then you can't do just as well, just increases the challenge in exposing that myth. The second message is that if we want to fundamentally change capitalism, then we need to bring alongside the traditional dimensions of risk and return a third dimension, which is measurable impact. And to expose this second myth, that impact cannot be measured. Of course, we've all assumed that it couldn't be measured, that it's impossible to measure an improvement in somebody's life. But we're discovering that you can certainly measure the number of illiterate children who learn to read and to count, the number of prisoners going back to jail, the number of homeless people who end up in jobs and in homes. We can measure, we are measuring. There are 118 social impact bonds where the return is dependent on the measurement of social outcomes. And you've heard from our tremendous national advisory boards just how many more social impact bonds are in the pipeline. To give more weight to this notion of measurement, we have to begin to address the issue of measuring company impact. And we of the GSG are pledging that with all of you, by the end of 2019, we will deliver a framework acceptable to a number of leading investors, which enables us to put an impact profit and loss statement and an impact balance sheet alongside traditional financial ones. And then we will be able to compare two companies 
which are both making a million or a billion dollars. And to say on an impact weighted basis, this one's making 200 million. And on an impact weighted basis, this other one is making 2 billion. And then you can expect to see all the tools of financial analysis, price uh, earnings ratios and even uh, risk-adjusted impact returns beginning to be applied in a different way, in a way that puts impact as an equally important dimension to making a profit. Measurement is a navigation system of the impact investing rocket ship. Up until now, we've focused on measuring interventions. Now, we measure on focusing everything. We've proved interventions. We're now going to measure companies. And to the extent that any of you in your countries see efforts that can contribute to the success of impact-weighted accounts, then we ask you, please, to contact me, and we will involve you in our work. In order to create a groundswell of support for impact investment, we need to get across the message that each and every one of us here, and each and every one of us outside this hall, has a role to play in this revolution. You can play a role in it as a consumer who only purchases the products of companies that are operating in a way consistent with our values. You can play a role in the way that you work by influencing the management of your companies to work on the basis of risk, return, and impact. You can play a role, whatever age you are, by writing to those who are managing your pension fund $45 trillion worth of money across the world. And for those of you who are fortunate enough to have savings or assets, to write to the asset managers who control $85 trillion across the world, to say to them, I want my portfolios to be invested in a way that's consistent with doing good and doing well at the same time. Unless we succeed in bringing home to everyone that their personal choices are the determining factor in this revolution, it will take a lot longer for us to achieve our goals. Why? Because it's the consumers and the pension savers and the asset owners and the entrepreneurs that bring pressure to bear on those who are managing their assets. And those who are managing their assets are bringing pressure to bear on companies. And I guarantee that the minute the investment community says, we expect you to deliver not just financial accounts every year, but impact-weighted financial accounts as well, you will see every major company shifting to do that. And it will change their behavior, because when they know that people are doing sums on whether the achievement of impact is actually enhancing the financial profitability of a company, and that capital and talent flow to it because of that, and that their survival as a leader in their business field depends on their delivering impact alongside profit and in equal measure, they will have no choice but to do that. In achieving that, we have to understand that persuasion of leaders does not usually lead results. Persuading the largest companies in the world 
just to shift on the basis of the arguments that we are advancing will not happen. It is the challenges to these companies who believe that there is an opportunity in impact investment who are going to drive that change. And in the same way that IBM did not bring us the PC and the tiny company called Apple did, in that same way, the application of risk-return impact in companies the adoption of impact-weighted accounts is unlikely to come from those who benefit from the status quo and are able to lead it. They will not cannibalize themselves. They will not cannibalize themselves. We have to back those that will. We have to back those that are able to disrupt their markets, to put themselves at a competitive advantage in delivering profits by delivering impact. And so the attempts of last year to launch funds which are coming to fruition now are a very important aspect of winning this revolution because revolutions need to stand for something more than just a formula. They need to stand for an improvement in major challenges the world faces. We have started with education. You have heard so much evidence of the need for education. And hearing Elias speak eloquently about Africa, these are challenges that we can help to solve. And so education and refugees and health and following our lunch with Al Gore today, I'm proud to say with an environmental billion dollar outcomes fund that we will focus on launching in the course of next year. Those <laughs> Those are the initiatives that bring home to people the feeling that there is a new way ahead. And so, as we part this evening, I count on you to take the message on impact as well as carrying back to your countries, we have 120 copies per NAB, 120 copies that land on the tables of the policy makers, the opinion formers, the business leaders, the financial leaders, all of the figures in your communities that are necessary allies in making this revolution happen. And we count on you to recruit the millennial generation, who may be your brothers or sisters or children, to tweet, to Instagram, to email, and digitally to spread the world. What we can see, which we didn't quite see in Chicago, is that impact investment really is the way to put the world on the path to impact economies. And impact economies is where we need to get to if we want to get to a better world. So Godspeed back to your countries. You have the will. You have the way. There has never been a better time than right now. Let's do it. Yeah.